Hello, Happy New Year. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we'll cover exercise 2F and this is from the new second edition methods textbook. In particular, we're interested in investigating families of straight lines. Before we start, here's a quick recap on linear equations. The general form we all know is y is equal to mx plus c. m is the gradient, in other words, the slope of a line or the steepness. Um, we also know that the larger the gradient, the steeper the line. In other words, the rate of change is greater if we have a greater gradient because the line simply increases faster when m is a bigger number. On the other hand, the smaller the slope, um, so the slower the growth or decay and slower the rate of change because the line would increase slowly when m is a small number. This will then make a lot of sense if you look at the two descriptions below. When two lines have the same m, so same gradient, it means that the two lines are increasing at the same rate. It doesn't matter what c is. When c is the same, the two lines are basically the same line, right? Because the equation becomes the same. Here, c can be different, but as long as the gradient is the same, so as long as the m value is the same, the two lines will have the same slope and are therefore called parallel lines. And when two lines have different m values, so you can see in the second statement, the lines will intersect, right? Because when gradients are different, the two lines are no longer parallel and therefore they will intersect. And a special case is that if the two gradients multiply to negative one, the two lines are perpendicular. So we've talked about this before, so we won't spend too much time on this. Now moving on to C. C is the y-intercept. Um, it is a constant. It denotes the y-value of the point in which the line intersects with the y-axis. So when x equals zero, we can find C, which is where the line cuts the vertical axis. So we know all of this already. This is just a quick recap and hopefully that can help you to recall some of the things we've learned earlier. Now, look at this family of graphs. Here are three families of straight lines, okay? The first type is actually y is equal to mx. We know that without a c value, without um, a y-intercept, the line will pass through the origin. So this is the first type where the gradient m of the line varies. So m can take any value, positive or negative, but all these lines, they all share uh, one thing in common is that these straight lines, they all pass through the origin. Okay, so this is the first uh, family or first kind. The second type is y is equal to 3x plus c. Um, y-intercept c varies in this case. So the graph will have a gradient of 3. All of them will share the same gradient, but intersect the y-axis at different points. Okay, so let's see if we have anything from this family in this graph. Uh, 3x plus c, okay, so this line is definitely 3x plus c, and our c value in this case is 2 because that's where the line intersects with the y-axis. And it seems like that's the only line here. Uh, the third family is in fact y is equal to mx plus 2. Now, m is the gradient. Okay, so the gradient of the line varies in this case. The graph are the straight lines with y-intercept of 2, and all of them will have the same y-intercept. These lines only share the same y-intercept with different gradient. Um, they have different steepness. Okay, let's try and find some um, graphs from this family. So when c is equal to 2, now clearly this is um, negative 3 as the gradient and c is positive 2 that's another one and here's another one and in fact all these lines are from the third family they have a y-intercept of 2 and they all have different gradients so um, in this graph we actually don't have any graph from the first family however um, just one interesting observation is that all these lines on this graph, they share one common point, which is the common y-intercept, 0, 2. Okay, now let's look at some examples. 
Example 20. Find the value of m, so finding the gradient, if the line y is equal to mx plus 2 passes through the point 3, 11. We know that uh, the first value in a coordinate corresponds to the x value, the second value corresponds to the y value. We also use the number machine um, as an analogy to explain the input and output. So if you want to check out the number machine explanation, um, please refer to the previous videos. So this is saying that when x is equal to 3, okay, and we plug this value into this equation, this given equation, the output y will equal to 11. So we can simply just sub in the values, right? When y is equal to 11 um, and x takes the value 3, so 3 times m plus 2 equals 11. And we just need to find what m is. Um, take away 2 on both sides. Let's solve this equation for m. 11 minus 2 equals 9 and 3m plus 2 minus 2, 2, 2 is get cancelled out, so that's gone. And let's divide by 3 again. And m is equal to 3. So this means the gradient is 3. Let's quickly rewrite the equation to present our final answer. So the equation is y is equal to 3x plus 2. That's our final equation. And since the question asks specifically to find the value of m, um, it's better if we conclude. So therefore, um, m is equal to 3. Example 21. A family of lines have equations of the form y is equal to mx plus 2. Now, it seems like they all share the same c value, so they have the same y-intercept, whereas the gradient varies. So m is a negative number. Okay, so here we've, we've been given that the gradient is negative, so let's keep that in mind. Question A asks us to find the x-axis intercept, so the x-intercept um, of a line in this family in terms of m. In terms of m means we can express our answer using m, so including m. It doesn't have to be a specific number, we can include this variable m. Okay, let's have a go at question A. Find the x um, intercepts of a line in this family in terms of m. To find x, we need to let y equal 0, right? And vice versa. When you're finding y intercept, you let x equal 0. So when y is equal to 0, we have so mx plus 2 is equal to 0. Now let's solve for x since that's the variable. Uh, we can take away 2 from both sides just to eliminate the constant. So we have mx is equal to negative 2. And finally, to find x by itself, we're going to reverse multiplying m, which is dividing m from both sides. x is then equal to negative 2 over m. All right, so this is basically the answer. The x-intercept is negative 2 over m. Now, let's look at question B. For which values of m is the x-intercept greater than 3? Here, we're dealing with inequalities, okay? And we'll be solving um, an inequality as well because greater than 3 is not a specific value. And clearly, we're using our results from part A, right? Because it's asking for the x um, intercept. So we know x intercept is negative 2 over m. When will m be greater than 3? So we simply set the x intercept to be greater than 3 and we solve for m. Um, let's multiply m on both sides. We have negative 2 is less than because there's negative involved, so we need to switch the sign, is less than 3m. And finally, we can divide 3 from both sides to have m by itself. Um, so that's negative 2 over 3 is less than m. Okay, so therefore, let's conclude. Therefore, um, the x-intercept is greater than 3 for any value that's greater than 2 thirds and less than zero.
Okay, let's try part C. Find the equation of the line perpendicular to the line y is equal to mx plus 2 at the point 0, 2. Okay, perpendicular means the gradient will multiply to negative 1. If the gradient is m, we can simply write the gradient of the perpendicular line to be negative 1 over m. Okay, because we know that um, negative 1 over m times m will equal to negative 1. So that's uh, where it came from. If they pass through the same point, it means that they have the same y-intercept when x equals 0, y equals 2. So we simply rewrite our gradient. And everything else doesn't have to change. This will be the final equation. Hope you find this video helpful and I will see you in the next video. Bye!